Hi and welcome to part um, 4 of our Blackberry Cascades SDK tutorial and this time we will focus on data management and in particular on data models. So with data models I think we should first take a look at the um, main class of data models which is data model as we see here. Um, if we scroll down, we see the main four data models which um, BlackBerry 10 offers. That's first an array data model, a group data model, the QList data model, which we already have uh, used, and an XML data model. So let's take a, look, a quick look at those classes. And first we have um, array data model, which is similar to QList data model, um, but um, offers uh, a Q variant list only and um, also can contain Q objects. And it's not um, a template like QList data model where you can just simply put any data model inside. Um, Q array data model is um, a little more limited in this case. And with the group data model, this is the data group model which we actively will work today with. I think um, we will enhance uh, um, the calendar application from last time. Um, the QList data model um, I've already seen. Um, we use it with QString. You can also use it with different other classes. It's a template which lets you create a QList based data model of any class. XML data model is another um, data model which um, allows to use XML files as a data source. And what's interesting is there is no JSON data model, but there is a class called JSON data access, which will load data from a JSON file into a group model, for example, as we see here. So the BlackBerry data management APIs allow you to um, actively engage with web services and then put the results of an as is JSON or XML into a model and display it in your app. Um, as we see down here, um, you either can load the content from a JSON file or you can um, load the content from a buffer of a QByte array or QString. Now um, let's get back to our QML example, um, our calendar event viewer from last time. And this is the event viewer HPP. And originally I thought it's enough to declare a QList data model of calendar event elements. But this is not the case as when we um, take a look at calendar event HPP we will see that calendar event is not derived from Q object and hence does not offer us to, uh, the access to the um, properties. And therefore we need to derive a class from Q object which is working as kind of as a proxy as we see here, um, event details. Um, which has different uh, property declarations which we will look later in and closer to and which will help us with the event viewer now to um, have a better access to this. And we will not use the uh, QList data model, we will use the uh, um, group data model for now. So let's quickly change this. We will not need the type for now on. And we will just simply say B cascades group data model. Which we know both can declare that way. And now we have um, group data models for our next event and for the previous events. And we will need to make some changes to the event viewer class too. 
in the CVP. Um, first and foremost, here in the constructor, we need now to um, create the Tata models each. So now I have um, initialized the, our models with uh, each a cube a group model instance which um, receives the names of our fields and in this case it's the properties of our class. It's the start time, the end time, the subject and the body of the event which we have declared here in our event detail class. Now we have to make some changes to the event view in case to um, let this now successfully compile. Um, not only our group data model needs to be created, um, it's now added to the event, um, to the QML. Um, I have now a new method called uh, reload events, which will reload the data from the calendar in our model. And um, this code is still the same, and what is, what is new is now that we um, insert in our um, group data model event detail um, class objects, and we hand over simply the event. And um, if you look at the event detail CPP, now, event details is a simple implementation. Um, it does not copy the calendar event itself. It copies uh, some of the data which we need. Um, there is the event ID, the account ID, um, which we need to later to be able to, to um, get the right event object from calendar service back. Um, as we do not store um, a copy of calendar event, we just store the data we would like to have, the start, the end. Um, the subject and the body. And here we see a um, get calendar event. We ask calendar again for this event, which we actually have inside here of the object. Um, and we can also save our data back to this event object then and um, update the event. Um, those are the setters. And in the header, we have uh, the setters and the getters declared and the signals and with a property this is accessible to QML where we have set the name, the type, the type, the name, read access, write access and notify. So let's fire this up in the simulator. And here we see the default look of the list view which displays now only the first item um, which we did set in the event viewer CVP in the constructor as you see here let's start so it's displaying now only the start time so we have to tell QML how to display our items correctly now Now, in order to tell QML how to display our model, we need to hand over to QML an array of list item components. In our, in our case, this is one component for the header, um, where we simply set no title, as we for now want us the header to be uh, the blue line. And in the, standard, in the list item component, we set a standard list item, which has a title of the start which we format with cute format date time and start and um, we also can set a status which we don't need to in our case so we can delete this and um, then we set the description as list item data subject and let's run this in the simulator And here we see our next events, and here we see how it looked before. And um, as a last thing, let's test to add an event. And let's put the 
this Sunday. And with this, I think um, I will end this part.